I'd like to talk about my time in Last Comic Standing. All right, so from 2008 to 2014, I lived in Charleston, South Carolina. And from 2008 to 2013, uh, I had until mid 2013, I had never actually done a comedy club. So the first four to four and a half years of my comedy career, I had never done a comedy club. So I'm going along doing comedy just in bars and in theaters. And then in 2013, I went to New York. I did a couple of comedy clubs here and there. And then in late 2013, I got to do Zanies for the first time. 2014, I moved to Nashville. And then in 2015, I got to audition for Last Comic Standing at Zanies. They were traveling around to different places and setting up auditions. One of them happened to be at Zanies in Nashville because Zanies is one of the best comedy clubs in the country. So they picked it and I got to audition and I crushed my audition. I murdered it. I was like, wow, this is amazing. The next day, I got a call while I'm at work, while I'm in a, a Lowe's in Nashville stocking pesticides, I got a call that I had been accepted for the next round of auditions and that they'll be flying me to New York City to audition for Last Comic Standing. I was overjoyed. I had never been flown anywhere for comedy. It was amazing. So I was I was pretty ecstatic. I got flown to New York City on NBC's dime. I got picked up from the airport by NBC. I got drove to my hotel that NBC was also paying for. It was a lot of fun. I got to walk around New York City in my cowboy boots, listening to Dwight Yoakam. I'm a thousand miles from nowhere. Uh, just a blast. I met up with some friends, my friend Keith Alberstadt, Derek, I think Evan, Talia, some friends, probably Sam Yakel. It was great. It was a wonderful time. I got, I stayed there one night in New York City, and then the next day was my audition. So around noon, I go to Gotham Comedy Club, and it's dark in there, but it's it's noon, and they're just seeing comics one after another, doing doing five minutes. And around noon, I think there's twelve people in the audience. One of those people in the audience is Wanda Sykes because she's producing Last Comic Stand, and I'm, you know, I'm pretty nervous. I mean, I've never done anything like this. I mean, when I was at Zanies, it was a full audience, and I even at that time, I was already pretty comfortable doing Zanies. So now we're in, uh, you know, at noon in Gotham Comedy Club, which is a notorious comedy club, and it's like it's huge. And then there's only like twelve people in there, so. I go in, I do my five minutes, and I virtually get no laughs. So I think, well, there's no way I've I've gotten this audition. So I enjoyed my night in New York, and then I flew out the next day, and I was a bit bummed because I, I was like, I know I'm not going to get picked. So I was a bit bummed. So a few days go by, and I get a call that I have been picked as part of Last Comic Standing's final 100, and I'll be getting flown to L.A., to compete, to be on TV. And it's a big deal, and I'm pumped about it. I'm like, whoa, this is amazing. And then a little time goes by, and I get another call that says NBC has decided to cancel Last Comic Standing. And I'm about to do a show in Opelika. I'm going to do a show in Opelika. And, you know, I've been riding off this whole thing. Anytime I'm doing a show for 10 or 12 people, I keep saying in my head, well, Soon I'll be on Last Comic Standing and I'll be selling out after that. So this doesn't matter because I'm going to start selling out shows soon. And because at this point I already had an hour of comedy. I had already recorded an album. Making That Fudge was already out. And I was like, I'm going to be carrying this hour around the country as soon as I become a finalist in Last Comic Standing. I didn't even want to win Last Comic Standing. I didn't even care about winning. I just wanted to get a little TV time so I could start selling out clubs. So I'm in Opelika. I get the call that I'm not going to get to do Last Comic Standing because it's canceled. So then I go do a show, and that show was very low turnout, and I was pretty bummed. But then a few weeks go by, and then I get a call that it's back on. We're back on. We're doing it. So I'm like, wow, this is amazing. So I'm going to get flown to L.A. to do it. And then they begin to talk to me about some background. They say, hey, you know, we really like, you know, your story about growing up. Because I talked about growing up in a, in a trailer park and on a farm because my parents are divorced. So it's like my mom was living in the trailer. My dad lives on a farm. So they wanted to do a bit of a background on me, maybe come out to my dad's farm, do some filming. 
And I'm thinking, well, that's awesome. They must be really into what I'm doing because they want to do a story on me. That's exciting. So I talked to my dad about it. I told my dad, I said, well, you can't tell people, but this is what they're talking about. So then my dad was telling everybody. So I was like, okay. I think we went to like the chiropractor or something. And my dad was like, he's about to be on last comic standing. You know, he's pumped. He's excited. I get it. But he's not supposed to be telling people, but he is. And so then, you know, it's back on. I'm getting, I get flown to LA. I fly out to LA. When I land in LA, I'm on a shuttle with another comic I know named Clayton English. Me and Clayton ride the shuttle together from the airport to the hotel. And we're talking, you know, we're both pretty pumped. We're both pretty confident that we're going to go very far because Clayton is a really great comic. I felt like I was a really good comic at the time. I was featuring a little bit. And um, I had featured for a comic named Julie Scoggins. We worked together in Milwaukee at a comedy club called Jokers, which is a comedy club in the basement of a strip club. And uh, so me and Julie Scoggins had worked that. Julie Scoggins is going to be on Last Comic Standing. So it's like, it's really exciting times. I mean, a lot of comics that I know are going to be on it. So I'm flying, I'm flown out to LA. I'm going to compete in the final 100 of Last Comic Standing. And then when this weekend's done, I fly back to Atlanta where I'll be competing in the Laughing Skull Festival for the first time. And while I'm there, I had looked up some of the people who won Laughing Skull Festival in the past. And one of those was Sam Morell. And Sam Morell was also in Last Comic Standing. So I ended up talking with Sam Morell a little bit and asking him about, you know, the Laughing Skull Festival. And he told me that winning that changed his whole career. He said he won and then he got to do Late Night and he went from being a part-time comedian to a full-time comedian. And he said it really changed his career. So I was very excited. So we go through a bunch of stuff and then they divide us up into groups. And so I'm in this one big group and we get sent to this room it's a big room right and all of the comics it's like a giant green room they got some snacks in there and stuff but no real food and we're in there i mean it's a big room of comics i mean just some people that i can think of right off i'm in this room this is 2015 i'm in this room i think uh whether it's taylor tomlinson sam morell miss pat ian bag uh, Andy Erickson, oh, Julie Scoggins, Clayton English. We're all in this room together. These are all these comics, and there's a few others. I got a picture. Uh, I should have I brought that so I could look it up. I carried this picture for a while just to prove to people that I was on Last Comic Standing. And just a big group of you know comics that are still working today, and it was a pretty amazing room of people, and I was excited to be there with them all. And then uh, you know, we're only getting three minutes this time. So what I'm trying to do is I only have a few trailer park jokes. And up until this point, anything we had used in an audition, we could use again. So I was like, I'm going to just use the trailer park jokes that I have. So I was doing my best trailer park jokes. And then I was like, but when I get on the show, I can no longer use the material. And I thought, well, I've got more than three minutes of trailer park jokes, but if I take three minutes out of that chunk, it'll mess up the rest of the chunk, so I'll lose it. So what I'm going to do for the three minutes is I'm going to show a little range. I'm going to show how I got a bit of a different kind of, of comedy, and I'm going to do that in the three minutes. And then in the joke, I have a nice callback, so it'll be perfect. So what I decided to do was my bad credit joke and then three of my fish jokes. Um, so I used to do these fish jokes, and I thought they were really great, but I never have done the fish jokes again. <laughs> to my knowledge, I've never done them again after being on the last Comic Standing audition because I didn't win. So I thought, well, if I didn't win with those jokes, and they must not be very good. And so I go on, I do the jokes. I was thinking about goldfish the other day, because uh, I've done some drugs. <laughs> I was thinking how goldfish, they have to live in these really small aquariums. And I thought it must get uh, so boring for them having to see the same things all the time. Then I realized that goldfish have the memory span of like three seconds. So I thought, this could be the most exciting life ever. <laughs> huh? You swim over here and you're like, what? I got a treasure chest in here. <laughs> and you swim over here and you're like, oh man, and a scuba diver in here? And you swim back over here and you're like, what? 
I got a treasure chest in here. You wouldn't even need to move around that much. You're just like, oh man, I got a scuba diver in here. What? I got a scuba diver in here? That's the same joke, really. I was reading about clownfish, and uh, I read that uh, if two male clownfish are in an aquarium for too long together, that the larger of the two will change into a female so they can procreate. And I thought, man, if that were true for humans, prison would be awesome. <laughs> Especially for a guy my size, you know what I mean? Like, no, 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 I'm going back. I'll be back here. <laughs> of course, we know that's not how prison works. Prison is the smaller of the two that changes into a female. And not for procreation, for recreation. <laughs> recreation, you know what I mean? There's also a fish called a sargasm fish, which I thought was funny because it sounds a lot like sarcasm and orgasm, uh, like a sarcastic orgasm, which I think would sound a lot like this. Oh yeah. <laughs> Keep doing it like that. No one's ever done that move before. <laughs> Somebody's getting breakfast. <laughs> and then the judges, I'm standing in front of a live audience, and then I also have three judges. There's Keenan Ivory Wayans, there's Roseanne, and there's Norm McDonald. So I'm doing comedy in front of these people. And then when I'm done, I do my jokes, and I get some good laughs. I mean, I wouldn't say I crushed it, but I got some good laughs. I mean, you know, I got laughs everywhere I told the jokes. And three minutes is hard. It's hard to come right out of the gate with three minutes. And I wasn't wearing the hat back then. I mean, I was a different-looking guy. And so I, I come out, I do the jokes, and then I get judged. So I stand up there, and Keenan Ivory Wayans, he basically was like, uh, I just didn't think it was funny. He's like, I didn't find it was funny. He goes, I think you did a bit too many fish jokes. And I go, yeah, three is a lot. And I got a pretty good laugh from the audience because I'm like, dude, don't come at me about doing a lot of fish jokes. I only did three minutes and I did a bad credit joke in there. So at best, I did two and a half minutes of fish jokes. Is that really that many? Not really. So, and then Roseanne said this to me. She goes, you had a good beginning and a good ending but nothing really in the middle. Or maybe she said you had a good middle, no ending, no beginning. I don't know. Well, whatever she said, it didn't make sense to me, especially at the time. Now I think what she was saying was she wanted me to tell a bit of who I was. And I didn't tell who I was. I just told jokes. And then Norm MacDonald said this to me. And the only person that could verify this was my uh, old roommate, Nick Donito. And uh, maybe I'll try to get him to verify it. But... Um, because I guess it's not recorded anywhere. I never saw the video of it. But Norm MacDonald said this to me. He said, material comes and goes, but you have a great voice. I think you have what it takes to be a great comic. And I was like, wow, well, that's amazing. Uh, so I felt really good about what Norm MacDonald said to me. So I thought, well, you know what? Keenan Ivory Wayans didn't like me. Roseanne didn't make sense. And Norm MacDonald seemed to like me. So I got a chance. I got a shot. So I go out, we go through all of this, and then they, while we're sitting in the room, they begin to reveal who the, who the winners are, who's going to be moving on to the next round. So they got us all, oh, 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 and I forgot this. We're sitting in this room, the whole time we're sitting in this room, there is so much time that goes by. I mean, we're in this room for several hours, just together, no phone signal, we can't even play on our phones, and camera crews everywhere. They got cameramen everywhere, and they'll, they'll just come in, and they'll just line up on your face and just start watching you. So it's like, I'm not the kind of comic that's like on all the time, but certain comics in the room are, and they're just trying their best to be funny for that camera all the time. I don't think they used one second of that camera footage. Because I ended up watching the whole show, and I didn't see any of that camera footage, so I don't know what that is. But I, I was not messing around with it. That's not the kind of guy I am. I'm just in there focused on my jokes. And I leave there not a winner. 
I only get a couple of hours of sleep, and then I got to get on a shuttle home. And Sam Morrell also did not, was not one of the finalists, who's gone on to have an amazing career without it. So I'm sure he's happy about it. But he was not happy the next morning. We got on a shuttle together. We both probably had no sleep. And then we flew out of there. And I ended up going to Laughing Skull Festival and losing in the first round. So it was loses all around for me at the time. So as time goes by, I remember sitting at home with my roommate, and he was showing me uh, a TV show called... Uh, how I Met Your Mother. I watched a few episodes, never really got into the show, not trashing, and I know people, a lot of people love it. But he loved it. And he was showing me an episode where one guy on the show was trying stand-up comedy. And he had jokes about fish, and he really bombed. Um, so we laughed about that. You know, it was a good time. And then uh, the same roommate is there. Me and all my roommates are there. They all know that I didn't win. But we're all gathered around to watch the premiere of Last Comic Standing. It's a two-hour premiere. My understanding from Last Comic Standing is that we're all going to get some TV time. They said, you may, you know, even if you didn't win, you're going to get some TV time. So I knew I didn't win. And Last Comic Standing made me promote on my social media. They had a little graphic for us saying that, hey, I've, I'm in the final 100 of Last Comic Standing. Be sure to tune in this night, this night. So I shared it. I didn't want to because I knew I didn't win, but I shared it. And then, um, you know, a person that I went to high school with in a very nice way, she shared a Facebook post saying, hey, a friend that I went to high school with is going to be on TV. Be sure to tune in and watch. And then that, I mean, that clip basically went viral. Amongst people I went to high school with, everybody I grew up with, everybody that I was ever friends with was sharing that post and commenting. People were like, I bet you won. And it was just like, I was like, I was humiliated by it because I'm like, I know I didn't win, but at least I will be on TV. So me and all my roommates, we gather around, we're watching it. And, um, you know, I'm joking around with my one roommate and, and, uh, he says something like, at least you won't be doing fish jokes, <laughs> right? And I knew I did fish jokes. So, and then we watch it. Two hours go by. The show ends. I never show up on TV. Only one picture of me shows up on TV. And I'm biting my cuticles, but it looks like I'm picking my nose. So that's the one sh picture of me that shows up. And then somebody else got a different screenshot of me. Uh, I think it was Brian Bates got a good screenshot of me where I actually looked pretty good, but I never showed up. So the next day I had to make a post on Facebook saying, hey, I never showed up, but hopefully I will show up. I ended up watching the whole season to see if I would ever show up, and I never did. And then in the end, it comes down to the final three, and my friend Clayton English won the whole thing. And I was very excited for Clayton English, but... Um, it wasn't me that won, and it was very sad. Uh, but that's the whole story of Last Comic Standing. And then uh, I think the show, that was it. The, never, the show never aired again. I thought they did a terrible job with that season, you know, because I, they were like, it's all about the comedy. We're, like, because it was comics getting involved, Wanda Sykes, a couple other people, and they were like, it's going to be all about the comedy, not about the drama. And then it was just kind of a nothing season. Nothing really happened. They didn't show enough of anybody's comedy to really amount to anything. And I heard stuff like agents and, and managers were in there working to make sure that people would get into the finals. And I think had I done some trailer park jokes, I would have made it a little further because I think they were looking for, you know, poor, poor dude kind of comedy as opposed to creative comedy. Not that my poor comedy is not creative, but that's that story. And basically, you know, for, so from 2015 to 2018, I used Last Comic Standing as a credit because that's all I had. And then and finally in 2018, I ended up getting on Jimmy Kimmel Live and then later that year doing The Tonight Show. If there is a moral to this story, which I don't know that there is, but if there is a moral, it's, hey, you know, just stick to doing what you're doing, even if it takes a, a lot of time. Comedy is a long game, so don't go burning bridges along the way. Make friends, uh, you know, do the right thing, be patient, and know that it's going to take time.